Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I put a tie on especially for this presentation. So, um, okay, so um, I'm going to zip through quite quickly um, some uh, impact uh, related uh, thoughts. Um, and uh, what I'm just quickly say, I'm, I'm based at LSC in a research center, which has about 70 researchers now, um, and they're all externally funded. So um, for us, uh, impact is our, both our raison d'etre, but it's also essential for us to continue to get uh, funding. Um, and the other um, half of my life is uh, spent directing the NIHR School for Social Care Research, uh, which has been going well has got funding for 15 years. Um, and I guess that's an economist running a, you know, a big outfit within an IHR, uh, but it's not a, about economics as such. So um, impact is key to both the kind of day job, university research center and the NIHR uh, job, particularly the NIHR one. So I'm gonna focus on just give an example uh, of a couple of pieces of work uh, and show you perhaps why there was impact and why there wasn't impact. And those are in the mental health area, which is one of the areas I work in quite a lot. And just to highlight why um, economics research can be seen to be pretty important. So this is one of those uh, beautiful pictures from the Global Burden of Disease uh, website you can set up. Uh, it shows you the, uh, what is it, years lived with disability uh, for each different age group from 0 to 6 days up to 95 plus. And um, what you can see, the red, uh, sorry, the blue um, colours, the dark blue colours uh, indicate both mental disorders and then slightly lighter blue is the neurological conditions, which would particularly include things like dementia. Um, and what the reason I put that yellow, that colour problem today, that blue cycle uh, circle at the bottom, uh, is that many of these mental health problems will emerge during adolescence and early adulthood and will therefore shape people's lives. They will affect in, you know, completion of education, employment, a whole range of other things. And so the economic consequences for those individuals uh, will potentially last for the life course. And so economic has become quite an important consideration in mental health discussions, policy, practice and so on. So what do we do? So in, in the research that, that we do at LSE and research I was doing when I was at uh, King's before that, and I'm pleased to see some colleagues from both places on this uh, meeting, um, what we've done is a quite a bit of work trying to add economic components into other studies, sometimes leading those studies, I'll show you two in a moment, uh, and sometimes uh, contributing in the ways that previous speakers have suggested. Uh, and we work across the life course. I've just put some examples in those blue and yellow boxes at the top of topics we've looked at. Um, and as I always say to the students when I show this kind of picture, you know, the welfare state goes from cradle to grave, but our work goes from sperm to worm. So we're interested in what happens pre-birth and we're interested in what happens post-death uh, and there are mental health issues in all of those areas. So those are some of the examples. I mean, at the bottom is just some pictures and we obviously would put out peer review journal papers as well. So let me just focus on two uh, reports that we were commissioned to do, one by what was then the Department of Health and the second by what was then Public Health England. Um, and in both cases, what we were asked to do, relatively quick turnaround pieces of work to look at uh, what was known about what works in relation to particularly prevention and early intervention for mental health problems, um, and whether there was an economic argument that would help to uh, encourage policymakers, help to encourage uh, local commissioners and providers to do some of those things. So what we did uh, in the two pieces of work, the first one on the left-hand side, the cover picture um, for the Department of Health in 2011, we looked at, and I'll show you the slides in a moment, 15 different areas where prevention might be suitable uh, in relation to mental health problems. And then in 2017, we were asked to kind of repeat the work, uh, go back to what we did in 2011, update, add some new things in, um, and again, look at the economic case for promotion of mental health and prevention of mental illness, if you like. Uh, so I led the first one, David McDade, economist, colleague at LSE, led the second one. Um, and those have had wide impacts, and just, you know, I will show you the impacts in a moment, but the areas we looked at, this is... Um, a slide which has got way too much information. And don't worry about the detail on the, the numbers. Those are return on investment type calculations. Um, these are all interventions reading from the top early intervention for conduct disorder, uh, health visitor training for postnatal depression down to the bottom where you've got debt advice and befriending for older adults. Those are all areas where 
uh, should we say clinical research teams had already shown there was effectiveness these things worked in terms of improving health preventing mental illness improving quality of life any or all of those uh, and what we were asked to do was to say well what would be the economic consequences in this case so it's a very limited economic evaluation activity and in each case what we were able to show was there was there appeared to be an economic case in some cases a very strong uh, economic case for those different areas of intervention and as is the case with mental health those required interventions or preventive activities um, not well not very much actually in the healthcare sector yes in the health sector but in workplaces in schools in communities and so on a whole range of other places which can have an impact on prevention of mental health problems and in terms of impact um, I did go to the ref impact case study to work out where we'd had impact on this um, and then uh, downloaded lots of cover pictures from google last night um, but you know the impact has been considerable we we have put an impact case study in for this of course um and the work that i've just shown you we were doing work before that and we've done work since then um and the pickup has been good and i think the con the engagement with economics evidence has been good at local at regional and international levels international whether it's other governments or who and the united nations are both uh, commissioned us to do work and use some of the stuff so so i think the economics uh, arguments i often apologize to people that economics sort of um gets more attention and more airplay than all of the detailed quality of life and clinical work that goes behind it because economics can talk to decision makers or talk to the media in simple language sometimes but nevertheless it's good to be able to have that impact uh, through those different uh, media so two things then to finish on one is to say you know when is impact difficult and then secondly what may help to explain the impact of those and other studies um so uh, i was asked a couple of years ago to write a paper for a journal called world psychiatry which is the big impact factor and 49 impact factor or whatever it is in mental health the big mental health journal anyway um about sort of reviewing economic evidence and so i took the opportunity uh, with gloria wong uh, to to look at both a little bit of evidence but more around the challenges the opportunities and challenges of getting economic evidence to have an impact on policy and practice and so in that paper we have quite a bit of discussion about those areas those eight areas i won't go through them um but those are things that you'll be familiar with you know that may well be that we've got something which looks beautiful in a cost effectiveness evaluation it looks like it's cost effective and it's worth it but it requires extra resources and there is no there are no resources in the budget so it's worth it but unaffordable um we have a huge challenge in the mental health area number three down there of of silos that the intervention might be needed in one sector but the payoffs will be much bigger in a different sector and so there are a number of reasons why economic evidence doesn't necessarily uh, translate into having an impact on policy or practice um, which are to some extent inherent to the economics area inherent to the context within the economics within which the economics research is undertaken um, so let me then, in the interest of time, just go quickly to the reasons for why I think we have been able to have impact with some of our work. And I look at other people's work and, and would say the same things. And I put down six things and they won't surprise you one little bit. Uh, the first one is to reinforce what colleagues have just said about public involvement. I mean, it, you know, it's it's mind boggling to look back even 10 years to think how little public involvement we had in many of our studies at those times uh, but it is clearly important and it's important from you know day zero day minus one right through the project so public involvement is important and secondly engagement with decision makers is important and, and we're fortunate at lse and that we are part of many of the four i think five the policy research units funded by department of health and social care and that gives us very regular engagement with uh, policy officials uh, with analysts and, and sometimes with uh, ministers um, and that's great for impact and it's pretty bad for quality of life when they send you a quick query on friday afternoon they want an answer by monday monday morning um i think a third issue is to make sure the research is seen as high quality i mean it, some of our work is rubbish and some of our work is very good um, but it is important that you try you aspire to good quality and you're seen as independent of the funder and that's been important for us uh, contacts are important okay. i can think of work we've done where uh, with richard layard for example where his links into the labor party and when we had a labor government into ministers was pretty helpful i think it was good that one of the cabinet ministers with which he li liaised was a former phd student who didn't finish her phd with him uh, so that gave him particular leverage um, and then fifth and sixth um fifth is about communication it's obviously about getting the 
multimedia things out, tweeting and everything else, um, accessibly doing the communication in ways that people can uh, engage with and encouraging others. I, I'm a firm believer the researchers shouldn't be lobbying, but we encourage others to do the lobbying. And then at the bottom, of course, it's luck. I mean, you can do rubbish research, which has a big impact and high quality research, which is which sinks without trace. Um, it's just, you know, luck, the right question, the right result, the right place at the right time. Um, and I'm training my next generation of economists um, in that slide. So thank you very much. Martin, thank you. Thank you for, for a great uh, presentation. But